Nikolai Vavilov was born in Moscow, Russia in the year 1887. Vavilov grew up in a poor, famine-stricken village, inspiring him to dedicate his life to creating better crops to feed the growing world. Nikolai Vavilov graduated from the Moscow Agricultural Institute in 1910 and immediately jumped into the world of plant breeding. It wasn't long before people started to know Vavilov's name. In 1924, he was appointed the director of the Lenin All-Union Academy of Agricultural Sciences, where he worked with the top scientists of the time. It was here they developed the theory of the centers of diversity. Centers of diversity, also known as centers of origin, were landmark in the development of selective plant genetics. Knowing from where a plant has come allows scientists to collect wild specimens for breeding and allows for the protection of these sites to preserve land races. During his career, Vavilov traveled the world collecting germplasm and plant specimens. Vavilov collected specimens from Iran, the United States, the Americas, the Mediterranean Basin, and Ethiopia. These travels resulted in Vavilov's formulation of the ideas of homologous series and variation and his theory on the centers of origin of cultivated plants. While this was incredibly important to Vavilov's program, Vavilov's travels put stress on his political relationship with then-leader Joseph Stalin. Stalin believed that Vavilov was a brilliant scientist, but that he took far too long to deliver results. Stalin had a country to run, and he didn't have the time to wait around for plant lines to live and die. Vavilov was clearly frustrated with Stalin, as his politics were starting to stifle scientific progress. Unfortunately for the Soviets, Vavilov wasn't the only scientist interested in changing the way we breed crops. Trofim Lysenko, a peasant turned agricultural bulldog, had his own ideas about the future of the Soviet Union. Lysenko published a paper on vernalization in 1928. The Soviet wheat crop had just been destroyed by a dry winter, and Lysenko showed that if one were to treat the seeds with moisture as well as cold, this winter crop could be planted in spring with impressive yields. Naturally, this caught the attention of Soviet scientists, Vavilov included, as the study's implications could be used to directly improve Soviet crop yields with minimal effort and time required. Lysenko believed that what he discovered would revolutionize the field of crop breeding. By treating those seeds with um, water as well as cold, he was able to get them to flower earlier. This paper resulted in Vavilov recommending that Lysenko speak at the National Conference on Plant and Animal Science. Unfortunately for Vavilov, this endorsement would eventually result in his undoing. Stalin was much more satisfied with Lysenko than with Vavilov. Lysenko promised faster results than what Vavilov could deliver, which won him favor with Stalin. Another factor in this favoritism was that Lysenko's Lamarckian ideology better represented the ideals of a communist government. We asked Dr. Anna Caisado, a professor at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, about the politics of genetics under Stalin and communism. Any trait that a human or any organism would have depended solely on the genes they were carrying that there was no room for improvement, that the environment could not improve somebody. Soviets, who classified genetics as a pseudoscience, then proceeded to arrest all geneticists, including Vavilov, whose criticism of Lysenko led to his arrest in 1940. Initially, Vavilov was sentenced to death for his refutation of Lysenko's ideals. This sentence was scaled back to 20 years imprisonment. Unfortunately for Vavilov, a prison sentence in the 1940s Soviet Union might as well have been a death sentence, and he died of starvation in 1943. In 1948, Lysenko successfully lobbied a ban on genetic research, which would last until the mid-1960s. Towards the end of his career, Lysenko spent a good amount of time attempting to discredit other scientists who spoke against him, which in turn created even more backlash against him. After Stalin's death in 1953, Nikita Khrushchev allowed Lysenko to remain in power, but also allowed mainstream scientists to openly criticize Lysenko's views for the first time in 30 years. By the mid-1960s, Lysenko had lost his position and his reputation was publicly destroyed. Unfortunately, a lot of the damage had already been done at that point, and the Soviet Union would have to spend the coming decades playing scientific catch-up. Today, Trofim Lysenko's legacy is synonymous with pseudoscience and failure and his political combination of other geneticists cost many scientists their lives. So for now, you would say that progress is moving forward at a steady pace? Exactly. And the fact that Vavilov's scientific achievements live on to this day is an honor that I'm sure he would have greatly appreciated. That's right. Sure, he may have died in a gulag and buried in a prisoner's grave, but he'll always be remembered as the grandfather of crop breeding. I'm sure that his willingness to die in the name of scientific progress in the face of a totalitarian government will ensure that his name will go down in history for centuries to come. The end.